Hey folks, Rob here. Day two of the cabin floor. Now, I'm going to just try a little different approach today. Uh, I spent a lot of time yesterday fiddling with boards. Uh, what I'm going to do is I set up my chop saw out here. What I'm learning is just about every one of these boards has a little bit of a problem. Not all of them, but a lot. And uh, so... You get a good straight board and you think that's a good board, but then you find out the uh, the end of it isn't quite square when you uh, nail it down and then it's too late. You got a, a gap in the, between it and the next one. So what I'm gonna be doing is checking each end for square and then cutting out the bad spots and, uh, and uh, going from there. So I got a set up here. So let's start cutting oak. First thing we're going to do, see we got a board here. Um, I think this one's got an end that's not quite square. Or maybe, maybe this is one to cut. Now something like that on the bottom ain't going to hurt it. Let's get a better example. Oh. Splinters. So here's one. Got a split on this end. So that's going to have to be cut off. Uh, kind of rough on this end so we'll probably cut this end off and uh, go from there and I'm gonna check it for square once I decide where to cut it now I don't know which leaves cleanest cut top or cut from the top or bottom so we're gonna try it each way <laughs> it's pretty clean cut most of our tear outs on the back, so I'm going to say cut from the top. Now let's check these for square. And that is square. You can see right there. She is square. So the smiter saw is cut good and square. Yep, so that's a usable piece now. We're just going to go through and do that for a while. I don't know how much laying I'll get done today because I'm so dang sore, I can't hardly. But I can be preparing wood anyway. So, anyway, I'll check back with you in a little bit. Okay, here's one of the hardest areas to do because I can't get my floor nailer in here. So I have to get down on the floor and wrestle every piece by itself. Now, see, here's a, an example of one of those boards that wasn't, uh, wasn't flush on the end, and I'd already nailed it down, so I either had to tore up the whole board or just leave that little gap there. Yeah. I have a feeling that as farther I go across the floor, the more I'm going to learn about it, and it's going to be better where you'll least see it. <laughs> it is right here, but it, it's okay. I'm just doing it for me. So... This wall jack in the box is a handy little thing to have, especially in these tight spots where where you can't really get your floor nail it. So the way I've been using it is, and we'll get this in good and tight. been using a scrap piece of board to put my hook over and basically take this rubber hammer and just beat it in there so that's about as good as it's going to get right there I don't want to crank on it no more so, take my finish nailer. These are inch and a half finish nails. And just shoot down through the tub. It's going to get harder as I get closer to the wall. At some point, I'm going to have to top nail. Now we're out here in the room. Let's 
release this to release it, you can push forward on the handle. That's the pressure off of it. Set that in there out of our way. Now we're going to get our, our $20 floor nailer that I bought off the marketplace. I'm going to show you how that works. Oh, I did find my mag pull gloves. Here's the hard part for me. When I get down, getting back up. I about have to have some kind of help. Oh. Oh, it's all hard on no man. All right. Twenty dollar floor nailer. This is a Central Pneumatic Harbor Freight brand that I bought off a fella in the marketplace. Now he said it misfired every once in a while, but I have yet to have it misfire once. So, except for on that last board up there last night, and it's because I didn't move that thing and I tried to short stroke. So. Here's what caused me to miss stroke last night is uh, in my set my nailer is this little cabinet right here. I'm just gonna take everything on it and put it in this box, keep it all together. Some of it's just trash. And then we're gonna move this little dresser. Not in the way. This is where I put my work stuff, my ID, and got some beard oil there. Oh, I forgot about this. If you live in this area, you need some painting done. Dave's uh, painting and maintenance. He's a real good guy. He's the guy I bought the award robot for. Got to talking to him. And uh, real good guy. He paints, does maintenance. He can do about anything. There's his phone number. So if you need any work done around here in this area, check out Dave. All right, we got that cleaned off. I'll just set this over here. I still got this pile of tongue and groove over here that I'm going to have to do something with. Guess I'll have to take it out to the building and do away with it out there. Okay, now we can move this out of the way a little bit. Oh, better get the Winchester out of there. God, she's dusty. Woo! She's dusty, guys. I don't know what it is about this place, but it's just dusty here. Lay it up there on the bed. We'll just move this over a few feet. I just got my socks and underwear and stuff in it. I'm gonna go find us a piece to fit there. Mark it. I think it is. And it might be just perfect. Who knows? 
Wouldn't that be nice if it fit perfectly in there? Once I tell you, she's going to be close. Lord, look at that. Looks like it was made to go there. I didn't even have to measure. And you're probably thinking, Rob, why are you doing that with no shoes on? Uh, I love the feel of the wood under my feet. I'm not going to sand it. I'm just going to put the coat in poly. And call it good. Because I like the little bit of texture. Now see, here's where that got in my way. Yes. Oh, hang on, I haven't moved it enough. missed and put that one in the top. I done that a few times yesterday. Missed and actually put it up on the top. I'll drive that down in there and that'll be out of way. So anyway there's a twenty dollar nailer and another row done. That went together a lot better. It was worth my time to go out there and Cut out the bad places and trim the ends and make sure they were flush and getting a better better finished product. Should have done it from the get-go, but I didn't realize I figured the ends were flush. Alright, I've got some other row laid out here. I got our half inch up here, two quarter inch spacers up there, make a half. Got us another row laid out. And uh, we're just going to start down through there and install this row. By the time I get done with this, it's about the time I'll actually get halfway decent at it. And I can see my rows of uh, joists right there. So I try to get a nail in the joist every time I come up on it. Tell you, this was the best twenty dollars I ever spent. That's how we start. Whew. I tell you, it's tiresome though. Bending over, swinging that hammer. Well, guys, I just was figuring up. I've laid 32 inches wide by 40 feet, which is 128 square feet of hardwood flooring. And about. 10 hours of total time it's 145 right now getting ready to go out and cut some more boards I've used up all I had cut I have a few little pieces there and uh, I'm working on my 12th row I think I got two more before I once I get past that right there where all that hard work is getting down in the floor once I get out in here, get everything moved out and out of here, 
this will go a lot quicker. Well, I'm done for the day. I only worked four hours today. Uh, it's almost three o'clock. Uh, got quite a bit done though. I'm about to the point where uh, I got this hardest part. I'm going to turn around and show you a little something. See what y'all think. Now right there. I'm going to have. By the time I tighten that up. There's probably going to be over an inch gap right there. And. I'd have to cut little strips. To go in there. And I don't know if I want to do that or not. What I thought about was just putting, I don't know, right this wall, putting baseboard and then a quarter round at the bottom of it to cover any gap. Or should I just cut a strip? It'd be a very thin strip because I've got to leave a half inch um, expansion gap. So, what would y'all do? Let me know. Anyway, thank y'all for watching. i got to work tomorrow. That's one reason I'm not doing it so late. i got to go. Pick up all my tools outside and clean up the yard where I got pieces of wood everywhere. and I got a lot to do yet. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Till next video, we'll see you later.